I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a cozy quilt design pattern. Every time we get a new shipment of fabrics in, I like to go to the pattern boxes and look through the patterns to see what would be fun to make with the new fabrics. There's a pattern I've been thinking of making for quite some time, and it's, here it is, paper lanterns. This will be perfect for a new group of fabrics we just got in. This pattern takes fat quarters, and I'm gonna make the twin size, which takes at least 18 fat quarters. Now the pattern would look good in lots of different kinds of fabric, but I would like to try it out in this collection called Prairie Sisters, which is made by a fabric company called Poppy Cotton. The only other thing we need is a background fabric, and I'm gonna use a solid. Most of my prints here are what I would call medium colors, and I really think that this will look best on a light, light background. And there's white in most of these prints, so I'm gonna use white. That will look the best. First thing we're going to do is open up these fat quarters and give them a quick pressing so that when we cut them, they will be nice and accurate. Every fat quarter gets cut the same. And I'm gonna cut eight layers at a time because that's what I'm comfortable with. Now I can't give you the exact cutting sizes because this is not my pattern, but all of Cozy's patterns are very easy to follow. So just read through and cut exactly what it says. All of the fat quarters are all cut. And now we're just gonna cut the background. The background pieces are all cut, and we are gonna mark the back of all of these pieces. And half are gonna get marked one way, and half are gonna get marked the other way. So I am going to stack up half of them right now and leave these over on the left. Then I'm gonna stack these up in a separate stack and leave these over on the right. Now I know I have half here and half here. This stack on the left, we're gonna draw a light diagonal line on the back of it here. And I like to use a pencil because I can sharpen it and it leaves a very light line. And this is going to get, this is not going to show anyway. That's all of that stack. Now we're going to come over here to the other ones and we are going to mark this whole stack in this direction. Now we're ready to start some of the sewing. I have all of the background rectangles marked. And then I've got four dots on each of these squares. So I followed the pattern to tell me exactly where to put them. And these are so I can line up the tip of this with that dot and this other tip down on that dot. So you have to move it around a little bit, get that line pointing right at the dots. And we're gonna stitch on the line, maybe a hair towards the corner. So you can pin it if you like, you can use glue basting, but it actually doesn't move very much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it and stitch. Again, almost right on the line, maybe a hair toward the corner. Now you should check. So when you open this up along that seam, these corners should match. Mine's a little bit short, that means I need to sew a hair farther away from the line. So I'm gonna adjust as I go. So my next one, which will go on this side, I'm gonna stitch a little bit farther away from that line. So line up those dots and stitch just a hair to the right of your drawn line. Now, if we open this one up, there, it's matching perfectly. So let's take this over to the ironing board. Now we'll just flatten this out. Iron it nice and flat. And 
And again, this one, even though it's not perfect, it's good enough for me to use because that little imperfection will be in the seam allowance. Now we want to trim off the extra layers here. I'm gonna do this with my ruler and my rotary cutter, and I've got the quarter inch line right on the stitching, and I'm cutting off all of that excess there. And we'll do the same thing over here. And this is the whole block. So the whole quilt is made up of blocks just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a lot of them. All the blocks are stitched up. It was a lot of fun making them. Now, when you lay them out, look at how cool this is. We're just gonna put these in rows where every other one is facing the opposite direction. So that's all we're gonna do is alternate the way they're facing all the way up. Now, the next row, all we're gonna do, I'm gonna get a different color here, is this one started facing that way. This row is gonna start facing this way. And we're just gonna alternate again. I'm just gonna mix up the colors a little bit. And once we get enough of these laid out, you will be able to see that this background, it looks like these are floating on top of it, but they're really just done by the pieces we stitched onto that square. It's really, really fun to make. There are all the blocks, all the blocks laid out. We've got that nice pattern. I always like at this point to stand back and see, do I have too much of one color in one spot? I can see right now I've got two yellows that are pretty close and two of the same gray print there. So I'm gonna trade things around uh, just a little bit. I'm gonna stitch the rows together like this. So I'm gonna pick it up in order. But before I do that, I like to mark the rows. So I'm just gonna number these. These are Avery stickers that just come off of the fabric and they don't leave any residue. And this is row one, row two, row three. So I will number that all the way up so I won't get the rows out of order after I stitch them together. That is the last piece on the last row. Finger press it. I've got this whole row pressed to the right. I alternated all the way through. So every row, this row's seam allowances are all going this way. This row's seam allowances are all going that way. And that'll make it easier now that we come to sewing the rows together. Now that all the rows are made, it's a good time to step back Make sure that you don't have any pieces turned the wrong direction because it's pretty easy to fix it now, but it's harder to fix it later. To sew the rows together, I'm gonna to take these two rows and I'm going to match up all of my intersections here and stitch. Let me show you. I don't normally pin these because it's a small block and I can tell if that's matched. I can match the beginning here. And then the only other thing we need to match is these guys in the middle. And this is a time when I'm going to try to get them all to match, but I'm not gonna stick a pin in. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I just wanna make sure that these intersections match and since they're nested, it's pretty easy. So let me go a little farther. Now, if we open this up, we can see how close we got. Pretty darn close. This one isn't perfect, but you know, that's not gonna show when the quilt is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the rows together and iron all the seams all facing to the right. I have all of the patchwork done. I put the borders on. I simply followed the pattern. So we've got a little bit of white, a print, and then the bigger print. And now we need to pick a thread color. I don't want anything that's going to fight with these. I want something fairly neutral. And I think this middle one here will blend in pretty well on both the white and on the colors. For the quilting pattern, I'm using one called Merrily. It's got little flowers, little leaf there. And when we repeat it here, that's what the row is going to look like. Paper Lanterns quilt was so much fun to make. 
Each individual block looked kind of boring, but when you make the whole quilt, just look at how they float down there and that background, it, it really looks like I did some sort of fancy piecing, but I didn't. It was really, really easy to make the rows, to sew the rows together. I like the little teeny light border. That dark framing border is really nice. And of course the beautiful floral. Now for the binding, when I cut all of these squares, I had about four inches left over. So I cut a two and a half inch strip out of all of those pieces. And so it's multicolored all the way around the quilt. And that was a really good way to use up all that excess. I've used this almost dark coral on the back. That's very pretty. Just an awesome, fun quilt to make. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the paper lanterns quilt. Now we're having another giveaway. We're giving away this Kansas Troubles log cabin. This is one of my favorite groups of fabric. It just looks so cozy and warm. So this is a big throw size. Nice, nice, warm, cozy colors, and it's very easy to enter the giveaway. Just click the link below that says giveaway. Put in your email address and your name, and we can ship it to anybody worldwide. Good luck. Now, if you don't want to miss any of our upcoming tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting!